Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. We're happy you're able to join us. Walter and youth are helping us lead today's meeting, and we'll be thinking about God's love and how that changes the way we should act in a practical way. God has the ability to change us and change our world, so let's join together in praising him with our first two songs.
Dear God, as young people across the country return to school, we would ask that you'd help relieve any fears and anxieties they may have around COVID-19. We would pray that all young people and their families would be kept safe. Be with the teachers who have been working through these very strange months as they return to teaching. May friendships be restored and young people be keen to learn as they return to the playground and the classroom. In your name we pray. Amen. Breaking news. Walton's youths have taken over today's online service with immediate effect. We are uncertain of what to expect from here on in. Our latest report is live with Kuda. Kuda, do you have any idea what's going on? Hey Sarah, I'm afraid I don't have a clue. Oh wait, the latest is that this would be the youth meeting, so the youth have planned to take this over. They will lead the online service from here on in and will contain testimonies, Bible readings, thoughts and even new songs based around the theme of love from 1 Corinthians. Well that's certainly unexpected. Do you have any idea how long this will last for? We're not 100% sure, although our latest intel suggests it will be a shorter online service than we're accustomed to. Oh my goodness. Things must really be getting out of hand. Thank you for your updates, Kuda. Stay safe out there. As you can see, things from here on in will be slightly different, but the service must still go on. We head out to Mofaro for any for an update on all things from the daily running of Liverpool Walton. Thanks, Sarah. Yes, in certain times indeed. The latest at Walton is that the COVID restrictions are still in place. There's a one-way system and sanitising areas and we ask that if you visit, please wear a mask. We are working hard to keep everybody safe. We're still continuing to save our community with the likes of the food bank, Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Donations are always welcome. We also want to thank those who have been volunteering throughout these times. The garden is looking great, the hall is tidy and clean, and there's been so much activity to ensure that people are well and truly looked after. It's been all hand on deck and they've done such a wonderful job. So a big thank you to everyone involved. That's all from here, back to you in the studio. Fantastic, thank you Mufaro. Our next story comes from our roaming reporter, Nell. Nell, I hear that our daily devotions and our coffee and donuts will resume normal service after this meeting? Yes, that's right, Sarah. We've enjoyed some wonderful devotions from Mary this week. Thank you so much for all your efforts. Next week, we will hear from Chris and Lenny with a new series called Everyday Sayings. I'm looking forward to it. I'm also looking forward to seeing some of those smiley faces on Zoom after the meeting. I'm glad our new normality will be soon restored. Who can say no to a donut? Thank you, Nell. Now it's time for the all-important sports update. What have you got for us today, Lauren? Hey, Sarah. The latest update on sports is... There is no sports. Back to you. Precise and to the point as always. Thank you. Annabelle, how's the weather out there? Good morning, everyone. The weather for this week could be... Full of eye-blinding sun. Or a sky full of clouds. Or just a light breeze. Ooh. It could be really windy. <laughs> it could be just a light shower. Or it could be lashing it down with torrential rain. Oh. Whatever the weather, always remember there's no such thing as bad weather, only the wrong clothing. Now back to the studio. Well, folks, that's it. Tune in next week when my colleague Heather will be back with all the latest. We leave you with this special report as the wonderful Annabelle, Poppy and Patty bring us this week's twist on the Kid Zone, aptly named Adult Zone. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of the service and God bless. Good morning. In our house, we like to make up dances and create new dance moves. I have my two volunteers with me and I'm going to perform some different dance moves and ask them to copy me. So, I'm going to do an action and when I say, you're going to turn around and try your best to copy what I just did. So I'm going to do my first action. 
Okay, so you're going to try and copy me. I'm going to do a second one. Okay, now you try and copy me. And I'm going to do one more. Okay, now you try and copy me. Okay, so was that easy, Hattie? No. Why wasn't it easy, Pops? Because we couldn't say anything. Okay, so now, if you stay facing the same way, way as me, and I'm going to do another action, and you try and copy me. So why was that easier? Because we could see you, and, yeah. and you were showing us what to do. It's much easier to copy what someone is doing when you have an example to follow. In John 13, Jesus washed his disciples' feet to show them it's important to love others and put them first no matter who you are. Verse 15 says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus loved people so much that he served them and even gave his life for us. We should look at him, follow his example and love the people around us by serving them and putting them first.
the share small testimony. I'm not sure it's going to be that small, but it's fine, it's fine. It's not going to be that small, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so quarantine has been quite an interesting time for me because I was far from God when I came into quarantine, but God was very interesting. He um, brought me into producing. I started the spot of quarantine. I was pretty trash then. <laughs> But yeah, he, I improved on that and when I realized that God had given me the gift of music, I want to stay close to him and see, you know, I want to, to hear and learn more about me because me even now, I don't really know that much about myself, you know, but God's, he's helping me learn a lot more about myself. So um, when I, when I became saved, I um, accepted Jesus Christ. Three months ago, so it's been three months now since I got saved, and it's something God's been putting in my heart uh, quite a lot. He's coming back. Jesus is coming back, and it's not it's not that far off. First of all, there's a meant to be peace treaty with um, Israel, and Donald Trump already signed that. And it's meant to be famines and pestilences. Well, there's a food shortage in China, and there's been the bombings. And if I, I don't I don't really remember everything about it, but I do remember when I looked at all the um, lining uh, like all the countries in order, they spell Lucifer, which is not a good sign, I'll tell you that. Um there's just a lot going on and I feel God's been speaking to my heart that he's coming soon. I wasn't originally gonna do this testimony, I was gonna leave it, you know, I was gonna be like it's fine, it's fine. But I remember I was just mad now and God told me to say this. And there's two here's two parts in the Bible that I know about. In Matthew chapter twenty four, verse thirty six to forty four, he says, "No one, however, knows that the day and hour, when the day or hour will come. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, only the Father knows. The the coming of the Son of Man will be like what happened in the time of Noah." In the days before the flood, people ate and drank. Men and women married up to the very day that Noah went up to the boat. Yet they did not realize what was happening until the flood came and shoved them out of the way. This is how it will be when the Son of Man comes. At the time, two men will be working at a field. One will be taken away. The other one will be left behind. Two women will be at a mill grinding meal. One will be taken away. The other one will be left behind. Be on your guard then because you do not know the day or hour that your Lord will come. If an hour, if an owner of a house knew the time when the thief would come, you can be sure he would stay awake and not let the thief break into his house. So then you must also be ready because the son of man will come in an hour you're not expecting him. So one thing I've learned from that passage is we know that his coming is close because the signs are in the Bible. If you read Second Timothy, somebody says about how people be acting, you know. I actually, I, I, I forgot this. I read this quite a long time ago, but... Yeah, I do remember there's been a lot of things that have been going on, which is which are being fulfilled right now. So I know he's coming club. And he's told us, Jesus said himself, that even he doesn't know the day or the hour, so the rapture could happen at any given time. And that's quite serious, so we always have to keep on our guard and be ready. Number two, the end of Revelation. Now at the end of Revelation, Jesus himself, he says, Behold, for I am coming soon. He said himself that he's coming soon. And Paul, Paul or John, I don't remember. The I'm sorry, you know, I don't remember, you know. But yeah, yeah, but basically, um, this hits me. This hits me hard because Jesus is coming soon, and I know a lot of us aren't ready. Me, I've been quite distant with God, but until, until I got saved, and now I'm just spending a lot of time with him. And nasty. I know I'm ready. The question is, are you? Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 40. Teacher, he asked, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the most important commandment. The second most important commandment is like it. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. The whole law of Moses and the teachings of the prophets depend on these two commands. 
1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 7 I may be able to speak the languages of human beings and even of angels but if I have no love my speech is no more than a noisy gong or a clanging bell I may have the gift of inspired preaching I may have all knowledge and understand all secrets I may have all the faith needed to move mountains but if I have no love I am nothing I may give away everything I have and even give up my body to be burned, but if I have no love, this does me no good. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up and its faith, hope and patience will never fail. When I was young I used to love to draw. I'd often try and copy pictures I loved by other artists, doing my best to imitate them and mostly with limited success. I'd get the picture in front of me and do my best to painstakingly copy what I saw. I was really shoddily trying to copy the end product without learning about or imitating any of the artist's technique or training or inspiration. I'd end up with a picture that vaguely resembled the original work, but it was still very clearly me. Being an imitator, a disciple, a follower, means literally trying to be more and more like someone. What do you think is the most essential thing about being a disciple of Jesus? 
we're trying to be imitators of Christ when we call ourselves Christians, but what are the key things that we should be striving to imitate? Earlier in the year, our youth group spent some time together learning about love and how that should be changing our lives as imitators and followers of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is asked which of the Ten Commandments is the greatest. And he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And the second is to love your neighbour as yourself. And in fact, he even goes as far as to say, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. If that verse doesn't make you maybe sit up and take notice, I think it's worth stopping and reading that passage again. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and to love your neighbour as yourself. Everything hangs on loving God and the people around us. It's a massive challenge and one reason is sometimes we can lose clarity on what love even means. The word love can be overused as to almost lose all meaning. In our general lives we might say we love a TV show or even a type of food. Surely this love on which everything hangs can't be the same concept I use to describe how much I like pizza. Surely it can't even be what we see in movies and around us of people being romantically in love one moment and not the next. Even in church it can feel like we use the word love so much it sorts of fades into the background. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 to 7. This gives us a definition of what love looks like as a Christian. Love is patient. Love is kind. It always protects, always trusts, always perseveres. These verses have become well known for being read at weddings, but as Christians we need to reflect on them regularly and let them shape our lives. Remember, loving God and our neighbours are the thing upon which all the law and the prophets hang. How do we live out this definition? The challenge I read was to replace the word love in the passage with your own name and see how it looks. Even then, Jesus wants us to go beyond loving neighbours. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, he asks us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. He tells us there's no reward for only loving those who love us. A anyone can do that. And I guess this is only right when, when we were against God. He still loved us. One of the things that most strikes me about that passage from 1 Corinthians is that love isn't passive. Even things like not keeping a record of wrongs or of being patient, they aren't a passive part of our lives. They're something we actively have to do because I think we all know it's easier not to love. Earlier we looked at the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet and it not only gives us an image of how to love but another reason to. Jesus, the King of the universe, God's own Son, the person will be seated at the right hand of God, a name above all names, respected teacher and Messiah, cleans the dirty feet of his followers. He's who we imitate. He asks us to follow his example and to love others by serving them. He says that if we are his followers, we should be imitating his example of love. And that goes from washing his feet all the way through his entire life. It can start to seem clear how we should love those around us, neighbours and enemies. But how should we love God? We of course worship him, we should be seeking a relationship with him through prayer and God's word, but John chapter 14 verse 15 records Jesus as saying, If you love me, you will keep my commands. Jesus wants us not just to nominally love him or nominally love others, but to practically do it by following his commands and serving him. And one way we follow his commands is by serving other people around us. Everything hangs on this love. 
Jesus said, whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me. When we love those around us, putting them first and imitating what Jesus did, we show we actively love God. And out of his love for us, we're not left alone in this. It may seem impossible, but when we pray for the Holy Spirit to help us, we can love and serve others more fully than we ever could alone. Jesus says, what is impossible with man is possible with God. The definition of love, the selfless servant life of Jesus that we hope to imitate and share with other people around us. Everything hangs on this. You are holy.
Thank you to everyone who has joined us today and to everyone who has took part and helped with the service and to God for bringing us together. We will leave you with these verses from Ephesians chapter 3 verses 17 to 19. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have the strength to comprehend with all the saints what of breadth and the length and the height and the depth to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Have a great week, everyone.